Hi everyone, welcome back to Falcon's House. Episode 4 of Game of Thrones had a lot more building for next week after all of the action from last week. I think that it set up the remaining storylines about how everything is going to play out. The episode opens with Danny and Sansa mourning Jorah and Theon, and then everyone else having a big funeral with giant pyres of bodies. The two things that bothered me about this scene were the fact that there were so many bodies, and, the, and since most of them were raised by the Night King, and they would have just gotten dusted when he was killed, and then the fact that there were so many living remaining. Later in the episode, they say half their forces were wiped out, but in the previous episode, it looked like a lot more, like 80 or 90 percent. They then have a feast to celebrate the surviving people. Gender gets named a real Baratheon, an heir to Storm's End, after Danny kind of has a tense intro to doing that, talking about how his father usurped the throne. I think it was a good move for her. It helps her build allies since the North doesn't really like her. She starts to realize that the North would support Jon more than her when Tormund says that Jon should be king. And since Jon already has a better claim than her and she knows it, but she is hung up on this notion that she has this right to rule. So even though she loves him, she definitely wants to be the one in power. We're starting to see some more Mad King in her. Tyrion, Jaime, and Brienne play a drinking game, and she quits when they ask if she is a virgin. She also turns down Tormund, and he gets sad about it. Sansa and the Hound talk, and she is afraid of him, and she is not afraid of him anymore. And he says that if she had left with him, she would have avoided all of that, all the problems she had with Littlefinger and Ramsay Bolton. But she knows that those experiences made her who she is today. Gendry finds Arya shooting arrows outside of, and tells her that he is now a lord, but that he doesn't know anything about it, and that he wants her to be his lady. She kisses him, but tells him no, that she isn't a lady, which is the same thing that she told Ned in season one. Jaime shows up to Brienne's room, and they finally sleep together. This has been building for a long time, and I know a lot of people wanted her to be with Tormund, because he was really interested in her, but she was never interested in him. Like, she never showed anything back. So, in a way, this kind of makes sense for the way the story's been. She was always really interested in Jamie, And he kind of was interested in her, but didn't really know it for a long time. So, it, I think it made more, most of the sense for the story. I know Gwendolyn Christie wanted um, Brienne to end up with Danny. But I just don't think it would have been able to be worked into the story the way she wants it to be. John tries to convince Danny that he will always bend the knee and that he doesn't want the Iron Throne. And that she wants him to not tell anybody about his heritage, but he wants to tell Arya and Sansa. I think that this case, she is right. The more people that know, the worse it will be for her. They start to plan how to attack King's Landing and how the remaining forces are about equal with what Cersei has. This seems like too many. There sh many more should have died in the Battle of Winterfell. Danny wants to march south right away, and Sansa says that they should wait and let the forces recuperate. Danny, since she doesn't like Sansa for not accepting her as ruler, says that they need to go right away, and Jon agrees with Danny. At this point, Jon is just doing whatever she wants and is not being an effective commander. Jamie is staying in the north with Brienne. Jon meets with Arya and Sansa and the Three-Eyed Raven in the Godswood, and they talk about family, and Jon has the Three-Eyed Raven tell them the truth about who his parents are, which is what Danny didn't want, but it fits his character, just like when he wouldn't agree to Cersei's terms. He's going to do what he thinks is right all the time. 
Arya said, also said she respected Jon's choice to help Danny because they needed her. Bronn shows up at Winterfell and threatens Jaime and Tyrion and hits Tyrion in the face to show that he is serious. He tells them that Cersei promised him River Run, and Tyrion counters with offering Highgarden. I don't think Bronn would actually kill either one of them, especially after he has given up plenty to help them before, and he shouldn't trust Cersei. But I think he's playing both sides, and whoever he thinks is going to win is what he'll do. So I still, it's still possible he would end up killing Tyrion and Jaime, but I think he would have grown more as a character, and this is kind of a backslide to just making him this random cutthroat that's willing to kill to get ahead. Arya and the Hound meet up on the road outside of Winterfell. Both are off to kill who needs to be killed. For the Hound it is the Mountain, and for Arya it is Cersei, but she does also want to kill the Mountain. I hope we get a Kuklaim Bowl, but I could see the showrunner is not giving us one and just having Arya kill the Mountain. But the season has had tons of fan service, even though some of that is really annoying, it's screwing up the story a little bit. As Danny leaves Sansa, and the rest of the people, Sansa tells Tyrion about Jon and his claim to the throne. She really has learned from Littlefinger about how to get what she wants by thinking about all of the outcomes. Tormund leaves to go back to the north of the wall with the Free Folk, and Jon asks him to take Ghost. I think this is a horrible outcome for Ghost, who just gives up their pet, like... Ghost has been there for John at every step of the way, and they're just going to send him off north. I feel like this is just a way to get Ghost out of the show without killing him off, and they just didn't know what else to do. It's kind of lazy writing, and pretty much the rest of the episode is lazy writing. John finds out Gilly is pregnant with Sam's child, and he doesn't want them to name it John, like they say they will if it's a boy. He says he hopes it's a girl. Missandei and Grey Worm have a moment on the ship, and then Euron attacks, and takes out Rhaegal with the most unrealistic, unrealistic use of scorpions. The scene was horrible. They fire with perfect accuracy. Nobody notices Euron, even though the dragons should have been able to see for miles. They can just reload instantly and fire again, and then after taking out Rhaegar, they can't hit Drogon at all. Why didn't she just fly overhead and burn the boats, or behind them and burn the boats? They can't shoot straight up or behind themselves. Heck, they really shouldn't even have the accuracy that they had. A moving boat and a moving dragon would be very hard to hit. They then take out her fleet, and all the important people make it to Dragonstone and are not attacked again upon landing. Euron just sails away. They capture Miss Andy. Cersei is met by Euron in King's Landing, where she tells him that she is pregnant with his child. So, instead, she had told Jaime it was his child, and now she tells Euron it's his. Which, I think, in a way, could be what sets off Jaime to end up killing Cersei. They are giving refugee refuge to citizens in the Red Keep to force Danny to kill civilians to try to make her look as bad as possible in order to win. But, I mean... Cersei blew up the Red Keep, it's not like, or not the Red Keep, the Sept of Baelor, and so it's not like she's ever going to like be like, oh, well, I was a great ruler, like, I, I just don't see what they're trying to accomplish there. In Dragonstone, Varys tries to convince Danny not to kill the citizens. I think at this point, there's going to be collateral damage, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can say, try to minimize it, try to just attack the Red Keep, or just try to attack where you need to, and not indiscriminately. But, at this point, winning is more important. She is a conqueror, not a savior, but she always has been. She's always just gone from place to place and conquered, taking out the old rulers and instilling herself, and then being like, well, I saved all the slaves, and that's what makes it better. Or here, she's going to save all the people and make it better. But she hasn't really been a great ruler. She just kind of ruled with an iron fist. Afterwards, Varys and Tyrion discuss John being king. 
Varys has a weak argument for why they shouldn't get married that John won't defy her, even though he just did when he told Sansa and Arya about his heritage, and that the North wouldn't like him marrying his aunt because they don't do incest up there. And I don't think that would be a really a big deal either, because they'd end up with the king, and she would be queen, even if he deferred to her a lot. It would still be fine. It would still be the better outcome than one of them dying or something else happening because they don't agree or like that she feels that he's a threat. Sansa tells Jamie she always wanted to be there for Cersei being killed, but she won't get the chance. Does she mean that Danny will kill her? Or does she mean that Cersei will win? Could be Sansa working with Cersei in order to have a free north. Maybe she said, oh, well, I'll give you Danny if you let me keep the north free and not be part of the Seven Kingdoms. Maybe that's how Euron found them sailing to Dragonstone, because Sansa sent a raven to Cersei telling her the plans. Jamie realizes that he has to go back to Cersei and leaves Brienne, who is heartbroken. I think Jamie is going back to kill Cersei, and not to save her, or be with her. Danny shows up at King's Landing, asking for Cersei's surrender. She is heavily outnumbered, and I don't know why Cersei just didn't kill them right then and there. She has tons of scorpions built now, which is pretty crazy for the amount of time she had, and I kind of think that's also another ridiculous thing. She went from having, like, one scorpion with a really long reload to, like, hundreds of them, and they all seem to reload instantaneously. They easily could have just taken out Drogon and just ended the war right here, right now, and they didn't. Quyburn and Tyrion talk, and Tyrion asks for their surrender, and Quyburn asks for Danny's surrender, and neither of them will agree that the other side is stronger. And then Tyrion marches past Quyburn, and all the Lannister army raises their arrows at him, but Cersei ends up not killing Tyrion, which I was kind of surprised about, because it kind of would show that she really does want to kill him, but maybe she doesn't. Maybe she is like, he is my brother, and that's why she can't do it. And But what she says is that they're not going to surrender, and that if Danny doesn't surrender, they're going to kill Miss Andy. And she asks Miss Andy for if she has any last words, and she says Dracarys, so she wants to burn it all down, and then the mountain chops off her head. I don't think that chopping off her head was the best move for this scene. I think they should have pushed her off the battlements and had her be killed that way. It would be a much more dramatic end than what they ended up doing. It's probably going to lead to Grey Worm doing something stupid. And Danny had a really look of anger about and frustration about the whole thing. I think she is done with playing nice and she's going to just go all out. And she might not even trust Tyrion anymore at this point. There was some great acting by Amelia Clark. The show is annoying at this point with how everything is turning out. But it could still be saved in the two, with two strong final episodes. But I don't know if that will happen.